Ladies and gentlemen, welcome inside the brand new Virgin Hotels Las Vegas. This is boxing, this is top rank. Presented by Hall of Fame boxing promoter, Mr. Bob Arum. This bout is scheduled for 10 rounds in the junior welterweight division. Our judges at ringside, Tim Cheatham, Glenn Feldman, and Patricia Morse Jarman. And the man in charge at the sound of the bell, Mr. Kenny Bayless. Introducing first out of the blue corner. He weighed in at 141.4 pounds, wearing gold and white trunks. He brings a record of 21 fights, 21 victories. 14 of those victories coming by way of knockout. From Bergen County, New Jersey, Julian Hammerhands Rodriguez. Introducing out of the red corner, he weighed in at 139.8 pounds, wearing red, white, and blue trunks. He brings a record of 28 wins, only three defeats, 13 of those victories coming by way of knockout. He is the former. Joe Tessitore calling the action with you tonight with our two division world champion, Tim Bradley, and the first ballot Hall of Famer on Christmas. And referee Kenny Davis will get the assignment to start this evening here on ESPN. It's always good when we have this kind of a matchup, right? We got a former champ who's trying to stay relevant, stay in the mix, stay on the course against somebody trying to prove he is on that path himself. That's what this sport is all about, giving opportunities, and that's just about all the sport will give you. You have to seize the moment and take advantage of the opportunity given. Rodriguez against Pedraza. Rodriguez, 26-year-old, unbeaten, seven-year pro, still trying to break through to be a top 140-pound contender. Had a left shoulder injury that had him off for 22 months, went through a management change as well. And this is the biggest moment of his career. Right away, I like what I'm seeing from Rodriguez. You know, Pedraza right now is trying to fight a little bit off rhythm. He's bouncing up and down, and Rodriguez is trying to time every bounce and every step that he makes inside the ring. That's what you need to do against a moving fighter. Pedraza is very aware of the power that Julian Rodriguez possesses. He doesn't want to taste it, especially early, and that's why you see so much movement and so much bouncing from the veteran Pedraza. All right, all right, let him out. Which Rodriguez told us he expected from Pedraza and that he has game plan for. Yeah, he better be ready for it in the end because... Well, you talk about that experience, Edge. And, Timmy, we brought it up in our visit with Pedraza yesterday. So Pedraza, at the championship level, has fought 67 rounds of championship competition. Rodriguez, in his total pro career, has fought 73 rounds. <laughs> See Pedraza loosening up a little bit and feeling comfortable to start letting some of his offense go. For a puncher who can hit hard, they need their feet planted, and Pedraza knows that. So he wants to keep the young fighter off balance so he can't plant the way he wants to. See, this fight's not going to be about power for Rodriguez if he wants to get in there and, and beat Pedraza. It's going to be about combinations. He's going to have to beat him with volume. He's going to have to beat him with standing in front of him, letting those hands go, taking chances. You see Pedraza a bit more comfortable, and you see a, a lot less movement from him at this point. Touching him with that jab to the body here in the final minute of round one. Yeah, he got the lead hand down, and he's sneaking that jab down, down to the body of Rodriguez. Coming to the end of round number one. Good co-feature, Pedraza Rodriguez, before we get to Shakur Stevenson in the main event. Don't go anywhere. Hey! To boxing with Josh Taylor's 
historic win over Jose Ramirez. Taylor then became only the sixth undisputed world champion in the four belt era of the sport. We've got some great champions who have come out ringside tonight to see Shakur Stevenson and some breaking news with one of them that we had for you earlier. We'll talk about a little more, and that is Tiafimo Lopez and his future. As Lopez has re-upped with top rank, extending their contracts, coming to better terms for his base pay, as well as the pay-per-view platform. The anticipated October 2nd is the date being saved now for the undisputed lightweight champion and his return to the ESPN platforms. Both men landed six punches in that first round, according to CompuBox. Ten-round fight here. Julian Rodriguez has been the full eight-round distance four times, never passed the eighth round. 21-0. 26 year old a little long in the tooth for a prospect but that can all change tonight if he comes up with a big win against pedraza nation work you talked about today see i like the fact that rodriguez is not following the script i see that pedraza he's trying to line him up for a big shot right now using his jab trying to control distance outside letting the guy work a little bit letting rodriguez work a little bit and then he's going to look to take advantage of him when he gets uh, down the line when he starts making mistakes because of fatigue it's a left hand that comes in on the back end from Pedraza. Yeah, Rodriguez has not been past the eighth round, Tim, to your point earlier. And this is the, a step up in confidence. Aroma in that corner as well. And the strength and conditioning coach, Jamie Belt. That right eye of Rodriguez don't look good at all. I don't know if he took a thumb on it. Not sure, but it looks like it's starting to swell. You can see redness around that eye. Something we will monitor here. Pedraza's got to keep that left hand, that lead hand, working overtime to keep the shorter armed fighter Rodriguez at bay. See, Pedraza's working when Rodriguez has a low. See, that's smart, and he's controlling the pace in the fight with the jab. Those spots where Rodriguez doesn't throw any punches. Good crowd gathering here at the theater at Virgin Hotels, Las Vegas. Joe, Tim, and Dre ringside with you. We talked about the work of Jose Pedraza and the jab. He has thrown 78 to Rodriguez's 45, a 10 to 4 jab connect advantage. We saw some swelling and redness developing around the right eye of Julian Rodriguez. He has stitched Duran, the veteran cut man, in his corner. Bernardo told me that Julian admitted that he got thumbed in the eye and so the instructions were do not blow your nose when you're out there so it doesn't get inflamed listen for boxing insiders dre they know what that means it's great usage of a tool inside the corner as well if you you press the swelling you want to get it outside the eye that's why they that's what that metal piece that they're using inside that corner is called an in swell and it's it's cold it's it's chill yep so but both of his eyes actually are a bit swollen at this point and, and marked up a bit. And I'm talking about Julian Rodriguez. Combination step, from step, Pedraza. Step back, step back, step back. Former two-division world champion. Back in 2015, won the IBF Junior Lightweight, and then 2018, the WBO World. American fight fans. He's the number two contender, according to the WBO, at 130 pounds. He has a big right hand. And this week, being around him in Vegas, we will tell you that he is completely unaffected on being on this stage on American TV against this level of opponent. Oh, there's a right hand to the body from Pedraza. Oh, my goodness. Good, clean shot to the body landed by Jose Pedraza. Ten seconds earlier, he landed a big right hand, sweeping right hand to the chin of Rodriguez. Anybody wondering why Rodriguez is getting hit? Well, he's getting hit because he's working it, and he's standing directly in front of Pedraza. He needs to go. <laughs> he needs to go down the street, walk away. Comes back for a combination and then takes another right hand. This is exactly where Pedraza wants him, right directly in front of him so he can pick, 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 pick away. Good third round for the Puerto Rican fighter, Jose Pedraza. Hey! 
strong third round for Jose Pedraza. He had a 24, a 21 to 14 connect advantage. He was 16 of 38 on his power punches. Timmy, when Julian Rodriguez went back to the corner, he heard from his dad, Alex, his trainer. He said, relax, relax. <laughs> He's popping you with small shots. But you have said those little touching you with small shots, no, combination going. work. That's the answer. Yeah, that's exactly what he's doing. He's changing the rhythm up. You know, he's shooting shots. He'll shoot a quick shot. Then, you know, he'll have to throw one out. He'll change, which is confusing. But the movement of Pedraza is what got Rodriguez puzzled at this moment. Those legs. Mm. See, sometimes a fighter that moves a lot, you get tired of chasing him. Kind of lures you to sleep. And that's what we're seeing with Rodriguez. Now he's just sitting directly in front of Pedraza. And that's where Pedraza wants him. Those little taps from Pedraza are piling up points, but they're also not allowing Rodriguez. They're not giving him the ability to think. He wants to reset mentally. He's getting peppered with jabs that are annoying. They don't hurt, but then a right hand comes behind that or a left hook. Good shot from Rodriguez right there. But Pedraza seems to have a game plan. And he's following it very well right now. And Rodriguez had the opening for the right hand moments ago, and then Pedraza right back to his movement and those pop shots right off the hip with that jab. Still waiting on that uppercut from Pedraza. He has a beautiful right uppercut. That's that are annoying. They don't hurt, but then a right hand comes behind that or a left hook. Good shot from Rodriguez right there. But Pedraza seems to have a game plan, and he's following it very well right now. And Rodriguez had the opening for the right hand moments ago, and then Pedraza right back to his movement and those pop shots right off the hip with that jab. Still waiting on that uppercut from Pedraza. He has a beautiful right uppercut. Right off the hip with that jab. Still waiting on that uppercut from Pedraza. He has a beautiful right uppercut. Full right uppercut. I think he's trying to lure Rodriguez to sleep over the top and then eventually bring it underneath. That's an easy jab to score if you're a judge. A straight jab from either fighter with the opponent's head snapping straight back. Easy, easy to score on the scorecards. See, why'd he stop right there? I don't understand. He threw a three-piece combination, got to where he needed to get get to, got Petraza to back up and out of position, and then he stops. Well, he's missing shots. That's taking energy. He's gotten, he's taken a few punches the first three quarters of this round, and it's just discouraging when you miss like that four or five shots. Now he has to get his, his win back and take a deep breath and reset. We're going to take a short break, come back, show you one of the stars from the undercard action you may have missed earlier tonight. Don't go anywhere. Timeout. We're more and more impressed. Right before we went on air, Timmy, I turned to you and said, Tim, if you could only buy one single stock in boxing, mm. knowing the blue chip, knowing you got one bet on one stock, and you turned, you didn't even hesitate. You said Xander Zayas at 18 years old. All, all day, I told you. We need to check his birth certificate because I don't believe he's 18 years old. He's just so mature inside the ring. He operates like a veteran fighter already at 18 years old. You know, I have to say, he is the future of the sport. Honestly, he could be the face of boxing. Well, Julian Rodriguez is trying to have a better future right in front of him. Right now, 21-0 prospect who's in against the former two-division world champion, Jose Pedraza. And Pedraza has a 54-37. to mm. And he's been consistently doing, being that kind of person as long as we've known him. Halfway through round five here. Opportunity to check in with Bernardo. Bernie? In the corner of Jose Pedraza, they told me, look, yesterday, Julian Rodriguez was overweight. He didn't want to cut. Then he didn't agree to the weigh-in for today, so he's got to be at least 15 pounds heavier. So the instructions for Jose are to use the entire ring to outbox him, make him come to you and tire out. <laughs> exactly. Beautiful instructions. You can tell that corner definitely has experience. That's what I would tell my fighter. Don't take chances, big chances, unless you have to. Right now, you're easily outboxing them, outmaneuvering them. Use your skills. That right there is called guard manipulation, what you're seeing. You're gonna see a big shot. You saw it right there downstairs. He gotta get those hands high. Went right downstairs. Ooh, he hurt with that shot. Boy, Pedraza opened up with the pity pat stuff and Rodriguez just filled the hole. But Pedraza also responded. And back to the jab. See, that seemed like a big shot, but the, the thing is, is that Pedraza saw the shot. Look at his eyes. He's completely focused on Rodriguez.
Remember Shakur Stevenson coming up in the main event. A recent featherweight titleist, contending now as a junior lightweight. And then following this ESPN broadcast, we will be on ESPN Plus on the app for our post-fight show. All the coverage of everything with Shakur Stevenson and Nakatila. to this point as we begin round number six. 188, hmm. landing 14%. You know, for Rodriguez, he's taking a test tonight. He's trying to graduate to the next level, and you run into trouble sometimes in a boxing ring. You see the eye kind of swelling. It looks like Stitch Duran did a great job to stop the swelling, but it's not going to be easy when you're talking about facing a veteran, going to the next level, and putting yourself in position for contender status. And this is... You know, these are growing pains, and we're watching to see if Rodriguez can overcome tonight. Work out. Stop, stop, stop. And the veteran, Pedraza, doesn't seem like he's ready to pack it in either. He's here looking for his next title opportunity at 140 pounds as well. 140-pound division. Was greatly altered right here in this ring just three weeks ago. What a performance by Josh Taylor against Jose Ramirez. Taylor, 18 and 0, all four belts. What he has done to start off his career is just remarkable. Rodriguez. That's a left hand that splits the guard. Rodriguez is fighting the southpaw right now. But Johns has switched stances. He's brilliant at it. And he's moving the wrong way. You know, he's moving to his right, battling the right, the left hand of Pedraza. I get that, but it's also lining him up for that left hand, which is dangerous. So he needs to get his foot on the outside. Go left when you're fighting the southpaw. Stop, stop, stop. Let him Rodriguez has spurts where he's explosive and lands the heavier shots. And Pedraza is ever steady, just picking and poking and trying to pile up points. As he just did. See that redness now around both eyes of Julian Rodriguez. I'm just waiting on a missile, straight left hand down the middle from Pedraza. That's what I'm waiting on. It's a better round for Rodriguez here. In the sixth round, you know, there's been some very close rounds that Pedraza has eked out because he did something toward the end of the round for me to give him the nod. And Rodriguez has to be mindful of that. My score is not official, but is. maybe that's what the official uh, judges may be looking at as well. Body language and who's stealing the play and closing the round strong. Obviously, you got the volume work from Pedraza throwing 100 more punches. Ten grand. Just download the DraftKings Fantasy app. Sign up with promo code Top Rank. Shakur versus Nakatila is coming up after this co-feature fight between Pedraza and Rodriguez. Jamel Herring is here ringside tonight. He's the WBO champ. If Shakur wins tonight, he would be lined up to fight for that title. He has been calling out Oscar Valdez. Oscar Valdez, who back on February 20th on ESPN, had a sensational 10th round knockout against the former WBC champion, Miguel Burchelt, and Valdez skyrocketing to number one in the divisional rankings as he holds the WBC belt now. You see Pedraza right now winning the jab battle. Biggest mistake that I see that Rodriguez is making is, is that when he does shoot his jab, it's from underneath. He needs to stay on top of Pedraza's jab, battle it. If you stay on top of it, then you can connect over the top. If you let him allow him to come up the middle like he's doing right there, he's going to do it all night. Dre's got it four rounds to two, Timmy. 
Okay. I respect that. I just spoke with Alex Devia, who's Julian Rodriguez's father, as well as his trainer. He said, look, he's got to start throwing combos to the body and don't give it up. What he means is don't just stand there after landing a nice shot. He's got to get out of the way. And he said, we have to turn the tide. So, Dre, they see the same card you see. Pedraza just missed that left you were asking for, mm -hmm. Tim. He grazed the chin of Rodriguez as Rodriguez le leapt in and, you know, tried to catch Pedraza in the corner. Fired off that uppercut. Just missed with it. There he goes with a power right hand. Yeah, but that was it. No follow-up. Nope. You got him near the ropes. You got to recognize that. You got a guy, you know, two feet away from the ropes. Get him to the ropes. Get him in that T position. Get in his chest. Have the southpaw square up so that way you take all the angles away from him. Pedraza may not seem like he's doing much, everybody, but he's doing a lot. He's got a lot of indirect mm. movements and feints, and he's just rattling the young fighter, keeping him off balance, touching him. That's it right there. That's where Rodriguez needs to be. Then he bags out. I don't get it. Got himself to the inside, fired off the two-punch combination, and then backed off. I'm lost. We'll try to find you after we take this break, Timmy. Joe Tim and Dre ringside critical crossroads fight. Jose Pedraza, the former two division world champion, who has been talking about how badly he wants a shot now at 140 pounds. The beginning of round number eight has been boxing well against the undefeated prospect, trying to be a contender. Julian Rodriguez. Rodriguez got an earful before this eighth round started. He heard his corner saying, You got to start trying to walk this guy down. You got to go for it at this point. Tessie got hit with a nasty mm -hmm. uppercut. Yes, he did. <laughs> he, no, started, we... he, he reacted, too, and he's blinking, and that's giving Pedraza some confidence right now. If I'm Pedraza, be mindful defensively, but I, I step it up on the young fighter because the eyes are bothering him, not just one, but both of them, and Pedraza's got momentum. Pedraza needs to start ripping some shots to the head and to the body to see if the young fighter can take the heat. That's exactly what Pedraza looked like he's doing. He's... Walking forward now, stocking both yeah. hands up. You see how he changed real Oh, quick. yeah, not as much movement. Being a come forward, aggressor, and then lands a right hand to the body. And there's that left uppercut again as he switches stances. But draws in control here in round eight. Popping that southpaw jab now. Just splitting the guard with it. That's just a matter of time. You see Rodriguez with significant swelling around the eyes, especially that right eye. He's going to have to ask himself some very tough questions that have to be answered right now. He's asking him as we speak. Big round for Pedraza. Popping that jab. Just a veteran performance. Nice sneak body shot right there. Right under the oh. That's Rodriguez. Two-punch combination while he sits on the inside. There's the left uppercut again from Pedraza. Rodriguez is trying to mount some offense. It's just in spurts, and there's no follow-up. I'm going to tell you right now, Pedraza right now, he feels him weak. He's popping that right jab out there. Mm. There comes the left behind it. Pedraza can really unload right now and get what he's looking for if he really, really wants to. A good, solid win, TKO victory. But everyone at home just witnessed is a master at work. That what Pedraza did inside the ring was he broke him down mentally first. Then he broke him down physically second. You killed the mind, you killed the body.
right eye started swelling earlier in the fight. The left eye actually got worse, and that's why the fight is over. Huge edge in experience. We put it forth early on. And Pedraza has fought almost as many championship rounds, world championship fight rounds, as Rodriguez had the total rounds. And that was apparent. Yeah, just veteran stuff. Just basic boxing fundamental feints and a lot of left jabs that kept the shorter armed and shorter fighter at bay. And Rodriguez had some moments. He had some spurts where he let, let those powerful shots go, but Pedraza was ready for him. He would block those shots, get out of harm's way, and then come right back with his own peppering shot. Doesn't look like much, but those shots with the eight-ounce glove, they start to add up, and then you start to see the damage on the face. And then those questions start to get asked of a fighter. How bad do I really want it? I'm in pain. I can't really see. Do I really want to go on? And unfortunately for Rodriguez, in that corner, he chose to not continue. Let's listen to that moment in the corner. That's it. That's it. That's it. Stop. Here, Kenny Davis confirming what the corner said. That's it. You can't see we're stopping it? Yes. Let's make it official. Here's Mark Chinook. Ladies and gentlemen, here inside the Virgin Hotel, Las Vegas, the blue corner informs referee Kenny Bayless at the conclusion of the eighth round, their fighter can no longer continue. Declaring your winner by technical knockout, Jose Sniper Pedraza. 29th win in the career of the two-division champion. He's hoping for a shot at 140 pounds. That is a deep and loaded division.